Hello and welcome back to part 2 of the API episodes. So last time we created a very simple API um, <coughs> which uh, basically had no protection and uh, hadn't, didn't quite have uh, fantastic uh, function names yet but we're gonna do something about it today. Uh, first of all change the function names so that they make more sense and secondly we're going to be rewriting uh, the code, it's going to be quite a lot of rewriting um, to make the uh, API um, only accessible, or at least make only certain uh, functions accessible for the people or whoever's going to be using the API. So that people can't uh, access your variables and change them, um, but can only call functions that you allow them to call. So we'll get started right away. Um, first of all, changing the function names. So we've got left and right, they're both fine. Um, oh, I already changed move forward. So already changed them. Um, move forward is now forward, move up and move down, and now up and down. Um, look and go to stay the same. So that's the only difference. Um, forward, up and down, the only ones that I changed. Uh, right, so we can get started with creating this API and making it, um, yeah, only accessible, at least certain parts are accessible. Okay, so to do that, what we need to do is take this whole file and put it in a function pretty much. So we're going to start a new function and I'm going to call it um, setup. And what this will do is um, create the API for us. Now as this is a function we're going to go all the way to the end um, and add an end because it it's just like a regular function. You start with function setup and then end with end and now what we have to do is take all of our variables and put them in a table. So the way to do this um, what I'm going to do is call the variable this or the table is going to be called this and it also has to be local. So you have to make it local this and then is equal to and you start a table or an array. I guess I could call it that. That's what I usually call it. But uh, I guess it functions as a table at the moment. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, and don't forget to put commas behind all of your variables. I already did that now. I already had done that because uh, I've done uh, been doing some testing to make sure everything works properly. Um, so yeah, don't forget the commas. You can even put one all the way at the end, but that's optional. So that's part one. We have now put all of our variables in the local or all of, yeah, all of our variables in the local variable of this. Um, as a consequence though, whenever we are trying to access any of these variables that are in here, we need to do that via this. Um, so in all of the functions where we're using them, we have to add this dot and then the variable name uh, in that function. So you see here for orientation, I had to do it um, here as well. For x chord, z chord, for x diff and z diff, but also for orientation that you use inside of the x diff and z diff. So don't forget those. You don't have to do it for variables you declare within functions and use within functions. Basically, it's only for variables inside of the this uh, table, which makes sense, I guess. So. Uh, make sure you get all of them, it's quite a pain in the balls to do it. it took me a little while and I uh, missed some the first time. Um, it doesn't look too bad though, it's, uh, it's okay. So for the down function, it's both the Y chords over here, you've got orientations and then this dot orientation. Um, oh yeah, and functions. Any function that you're calling from within another function also, have to have, also has to have this dot in front of it. Um, so you can do that while you're at it as well, so this dot right, this dot move down. Same for move up. Oh, but these don't exist anymore because they move. They're called down and up. I hadn't changed that yet, so I can do that now. This is now forward. Mm, this is also still forward. Um, look is still the same. This is now forward, and it's forward here as well. This will look okay. Right. So make sure you get all of them. Um, and if not, you'll uh, find out <laughs> eventually anyway. Okay, perfect. So, we've uh, done that, put our variables in a table, and we've added this dot to everything. Now we've got to deal with our functions. 
what we have to do is uh, store our functions in variables as well. So what it's going to look like is local left is equal to function and then nothing. So local left is equal to function and then the uh, actual body of the function and end it just like normal uh, except you're going to be putting it in a in a variable now. We have to do that for every single one. So this is going to be a uh, take a little while being to be a pain in the balls. Local forward, local up. Did I forget the equal sign there? Don't forget the equal sign, you have to actually assign it to the variable. Local down. Local look. Oh, there we go, is equal to. And local go to is equal to function. Right, I think that was all of them. Indeed it was. Right, perfect. So, that's done. Next part is making sure that whoever's using our API can actually access these um, variables. And to do that we need to add a return statement, um, which is going to be... Oh, I'm going to have to look at my cheat sheet now because I just completely forgot how that works. <laughs> yeah, return and then the uh, table. No, is equal to. So it's similar to the uh, the variables, but um, now it's just a return, and you return a table with your functions. So basically, um, whenever uh, a person using your API wants to call the forward function, they'll type forward, and then you have got to actually return the forward function. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look a little bit silly, um, but for me that's just how it works. So forward is equal to forward, left is equal to left. right is equal to right, um, down is equal to down, up is equal to up, mm, look is equal to look, and go to is equal to go to. There we go. And that um, should be it. That should be it. <laughs> now then, I've actually I've done this a couple of times now and every single time it would fail for some reason, something would go wrong. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna be okay. So I've already been writing like test APIs and stuff to make sure stuff works. Now the way to uh, import this API is gonna be the same at first, so it's gonna be os.loadapi and then the file name. Um, but we have to do something a little bit different now. We have to declare another variable um, Called, I'm going to call it move API. Preferably, I'd have these names the other way around, so I'd have this be called move API. Um, but I'm going to have to change that in a minute. Um, so, as you can see, we're now calling this setup function that we made in here, and it's going to do all of this stuff for us and make sure that all of this stuff is stored uh, in this move API variable. And then we should be able to do this kind of stuff. So there's just one extra in-between step um, of storing uh, your API in a variable. Um, hopefully this will work. Up until now it's been failing all over the place, um, but I guess we'll see what happens now. For the love of God, please do it. Yes. See it turned right. <laughs> it turned right. I did it. It works. Excellent. You know, I've tried this like three times and it just would not work for me. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this test API thing. I don't need that anymore. Um, now, I can actually start showing you things. For example, um, move API. Now, one of the problems we had is that we had people trying to access our X cord and set it to 500 and stuff like that. Um, with a little bit of luck, it will fail now. Let's do a little print here going to uh, change x chord like an asshole. There we go. And... oh, I actually have to print it, don't I? <laughs> x chord. I'll just print it. I've got a feeling this is actually gonna <laughs> gonna do it, and I'm gonna look like a complete idiot. 
Uh, oh, it doesn't do it. It doesn't even print this. Oh, whoops, yeah, because I do need to do that. Right. Okay, so it did change it. Now, now I look like a complete idiot because it's not private for some reason. Hmm. What I'm going to do real quick, because um, this is something we were going to have to do anyway, I'm going to add another function, and it's going to be called get x. Get x, that's going to be it. Um, oh, I'm going to have to get used to this new way of writing the functions down. And what this is going to do is just uh, return uh, your x chord. And we're going to try and call that here. Get x. Now let's see if this actually does it. Attempting to call nil. Yeah, this is something I've noticed when you change your API, then try and start running things and uh, putting in new uh, stuff, uh, it starts crashing on you. So the way to fix that is to do this. You <laughs> get rid of your turtle and you place it again, and then you go and uh, have another go. Attempt to call nil again. And this is where I get annoyed. Oh, I know why. Because I didn't add it here. If you add a, ver uh, a function, make sure you add it here as well. And let's see if this works in one go. Nope. X is now I'm just going to put another print here that says um, X should be changed just want to see if it actually uh, does this or whether it's crashing on that X should be changed and then it says attempt to call no, it didn't do that just now so that's interesting oh, attempt to concatenate string at no and nil. Uh, that's interesting. So this for some reason is not returning a value. Maybe yeah, I'd have to break the turtle and place it again. That <laughs> seems to help sometimes. Local get x is equal to function and end it. All this is does is that. Oh, I know why. I did uh, the newbie mistake. Whenever you're using your variables, don't forget this dot. It's important. Ah, here we go. X, uh, perfect. X is now minus 164. So, you can't access the real X chord that is inside this. This does happen, and whenever you now call move API dot X chord, um, it will give you 500, but the actual x chord inside of the move function that we have in our this table cannot be changed by the user. So that is good. That's what we wanted. Um, there's one more thing I want to try because um, in theory, I want yeah, this shouldn't be possible. The reason it's not possible is because this is local, so you can't actually get to it from here. I'm going to try it anyway because I'm interested to see what will happen. Index expected got nil. Um, let's try that. Um, yeah, is that it? That should be it. I don't know. I, I just think it, it won't let you access this, so it's just a complete waste of time. Anyway, we're done, I think. Now, the only thing I'd like to do is add some more functions to make this API a little bit more useful. Let me see how much time I'm on here. I am on... Oh, time. Ah, okay. I'll do that next episode. We're going to uh, expand the API. Uh, for now it's working. You can call uh, all the functions that are listed here. And we're going to be adding a couple more next episode to make this API somewhat useful. Um, and I'm also thinking about expanding it um, <coughs> to make use of GPS so that it can find these X chords, Y chords, Z chords itself. Uh, and if it can't find them, it will ask the user and that kind of stuff. 
so when you do the setup it will uh, do that all of that for you um, so thanks for watching for now I'm glad this finally works it would take me for bloody ever to do that which is why I was a little bit annoyed <sighs> but thankfully it is now working and you can call your functions and you can't touch these guys and oh yeah I should mention that if you don't list it in here your function then you can't access it the problem I had with this get x when I didn't list it here in the return I couldn't access it so if you want to keep certain functions away from the user um, that's how you do it, you just don't put them in here and then they can't access it um, and that's all for now uh, we'll see you next video which I'll probably be recording right now um, so thank you for watching and see you next time